きだって言った成長型の社会。というふうにした先ほどもお伝えしましたが、こちらの人申請の資本に皆さんがやってる話だと、SDGs みたいなのをやってないんだろうというふうに、多くの質が気がつくわけです。The end of history refers to the question of whether the evolution you know, finally culminates in a certain kind of civilization uh, that in a certain sense will be the, you know, the last civilization that mankind will achieve because in a certain sense it's the right one, it's the one that fits human nature uh, in an appropriate way. Francis Fukuyama's declaration of the end of history after the collapse of the USSR is approaching a totally unexpected dead end today, namely the end of human history. There's a lot of love in this room. In fact, the triumph of neoliberal globalization only accelerated the rapid increase in environmental impacts upon the Earth by human activities since the end of the Second World War. We are drilling all over the place. The so-called Great Acceleration the age in which all major socio-economic and earth system trends record a hockey-stick pattern of increase and ultimately destabilize the foundation of human civilization. Pandemic, war, and climate breakdown are all symptomatic of the end of history. Three of the hottest years on record, putting democracy, capitalism, and ecological system into chronic crisis. My name is Kohei Saito. I'm a Marxist. And in my book, I argue for degrowth communism. Go, go, go away, go away. So many people read Capital as a book that demonstrates the exploitation of the working class and also demonstrates the necessity of crisis and revolution. That sounds very deterministic. Capitalism is determined to collapse one day because of the revolution. But my reading, it's totally different. I argue that capital should be read as a book about metabolism between humans and nature. Marx analyzes how humans interact with nature through labor. Humans work upon nature and use various kinds of resources and energy and then consume them and then make waste and so on. Without interacting with nature, humans cannot live. In the 19th century, many people were employing this concept of metabolism. metabolism within human body, but at the same time, metabolism of plants and animals and between humans and environment. Marx was inspired by that active discussion around him, and he incorporated this concept of metabolism, in German, Stoffwechsel, into his economic analysis, because the movement of money and commodities looks like the movement of various nutrition within the body. And he analyzes how this trans-historical necessity is radically transformed by capitalist logical production. In pre-capitalist societies, people are basically producing mainly for the sake of satisfying their own concrete needs. But capitalism, it's totally different. Capitalism is basically dominated by the abstract movement of money, commodity, money. And this process of increasing capital is infinite, endless. So 
When the entire complicated process of metabolism is organized based on one single aspect of human labor, this thing becomes uh, distorted. And Marx says that in the end, capitalism creates an irreparable rift in the metabolism between humans and nature. One example that Marx provides in Capital is the problem of soil exhaustion. Marx was greatly inspired by the famous German chemist Justus von Liebig. He basically demonstrated that the soil nutrition is finite and is conditioned by the slow process of weathering. So soil nutrition becomes available only very slowly. Modern agriculture is driven by the logical profit. The farmers try to get as much products possible from the land. Farmers do not return what they have attained from the soil. That creates the tendency of the soil exhaustion over the long run. Capitalism tends to accelerate. They want to invest and then after producing the commodity, they want to sell as soon as possible so that they can reinvest. And this can accelerate many times, especially with the introduction of new infrastructures and the new machines and so on. Social metabolism expands more and more and it becomes faster and it uses more energy and resources. But natural metabolism, the process of recovering original resources takes time. This cannot be twice as fast, three times as fast, like capitalist cycle. So capitalism deepens the rift, but at the same time, it shifts the rift. The problem of soil exhaustion, for example, did not create the collapse of modern civilization, even though Liebig believed it would. In the 19th century, when Marx was writing the text, how did they actually recover the soil fertility? It was by importing guano from the Latin America. Guano is the excrement of the birds that was piling up like an island. Alexander Humboldt, while he was traveling, found uh, the local people using this guano as a fertilizer. So he took them back and then tried it in European soil. Uh, it worked magically. So then European people started to gather this guano as a way of saving their own soil. But it was simply spatially shifting the place of exhausting the natural resources, which would in the end lead not only to the war, but also to the complete exhaustion of the guano resources themselves. Capitalism, when we look back at the history, seems very elastic and it has always come up with new innovations. But this shift presupposes always the existence of externality. In fact, the development of the Western capitalism is fundamentally dependent on the unequal exchange of resources, energies, and labor power from the global south. It's about externalizing the real cost to somewhere else, to someone else. Capital is a logic of infinite accumulation, but our planet is finite. Infinite growth on the finite planet is impossible. I think global warming, the climate crisis, is the manifestation of metabolic lift in today's world. We're hitting the limit 
Not for the capital, maybe, because capital could find a new frontier in the outer space. <laughs> you see them both light up? But humans' limit, biophysical limits of the Earth system is already discernible. It's almost there. July was the warmest month on record. In order to envision a more sustainable future beyond the capitalism, I think we can still learn a lot from Marx. He was greatly concerned with the ecological crisis, but in addition to that, he also became more sympathetic to the idea of degrowth. And degrowth is exactly what we need today. Traditionally, Marx was often read as a thinker who proved the inevitability of the collapse of capitalism. But in my book, I argue that Marx totally abandoned that idea of historical progress based on technological innovations, which means that if we don't consciously choose to establish a new society, capitalism will continue to dominate and even continue until it destroys the whole planet. Wildfires broke out on Maui. They burned so uncontrollably that some people had to swim into the sea to survive. In Libya, up to 20,000 people have been killed by Sunday's catastrophic floods amidst unprecedented rainfall. 